Hello and welcome to Covert Castaway. In this episode, we've been um, doing a lot of passage planning. So in this episode, we're going to talk about weather routing and communication. Hello and welcome to Covert Castaway. I'm Holly. Je suis Stéphane. Join us as we share what we learn and how we're making the transition to live aboard cruising. So let's set the scene a little bit. We are in Grand Canary Island on the south side. Do you remember the name of this town we're next to? No. <laughs> <laughs> we're next to the dunes at Malpalomas. <laughs> dunes de Malpalomas, I think is what you say. We're in this little village marina, um, which is uh, quaint and small and cute and there's a few boats here um and we're bobbing around at anchor you might hear some boats in the background and some wind in the background but that's all part of the ambiance here on covert castaway it's a beautiful morning don't you think it is it's been beautiful mornings beautiful nights Mm -hmm. um, it's not yeah it's been dry, so it's nice when your boat is not, like, wet. For sure. Yeah, it's nice to wake up and not have everything be wet all over the decks and everything. Yeah, temperature has been comfortable, too. So, well, when we've had some sunny and cloudy days, and so we've been learning to manage a little bit of our battery in kind of a, in, in the off-season. Mm-hmm. To learning a little bit about battery management. Mm -hmm. And uh, power management, I should say, and then um, but our solars are doing a great job as long as you move the boom on the side. And yesterday was beautiful sunny day. Today should be, and um, and then we'll be moving back to Las Palmas on Thursday, so the day after tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. So to catch everybody up, um, it's been a while since we did a podcast because we were doing our passage from. Um, La Grande Motte to the Canary Islands, which took us, I don't know, roughly, was it 12 days? 12 days with some stops. With some stops. And we did daily video logs, logs, um, daily videos. They're each about 25 minutes long on YouTube. So if you want more detail on how the passage went and what we did day to day, please check that out on our YouTube channel. And apparently it's a premiere People have been commenting. That's the first time they see this. Oh, a daily, daily real vlog. time. Yeah, it's kind of cool passage. because people can um, view the videos and then make comments. And then since the next day we're making a video, we can address the comments and questions in the next video daily. So, And people are also following us on Vessel Tracker, Vessel Finder, whatever. And, um, predict win. And predict win. And so it's pretty cool because it feels like you know, it's called the All Together Maiden Voyage. And so it kind of feels like everybody's with us as crew. Like we have a, a, a crew on the ground as a team, which is awesome. Um, we had our share of challenges and uh, anxiety trying to figure out how to avoid the orcas and all that. So check that out if you haven't already um, to get up to speed on where we're at. But today we um, want to cover what we're doing to prep ourselves for the transatlantic passage. And we thought we would start with communication and weather routing. How's that sound? Sounds good. Okay. What do you have to say about it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll say a bunch of stuff and then you can correct me um, and add more detail. Um, so I guess with communication, the first thing is the different types of communication we have. Certainly the more, the better. Yeah, the more the better, it <laughs> seems, um, and building redundancy in. As we were leaving the um, the marina in La Grande Motte, there's some ribs running around here. Um, as we were leaving the marina uh, the, the couple days before we left, we realized we had a problem with our newly installed high-performance Starlink dish, and we had to run out and get a new one. So we have two on board, one that works, and um, so Starlink is uh, our, our plan. It's a mobile priority plan for communication. Um, it does take power, so we don't have it on all the time when we are going through a passage. So a couple times a day. And 
we need it on to upload the videos. Um, so for leg two, when we do transatlantic, it takes a couple hours to upload a video. Um, mm -hmm. And to well. read the comments. And to read all the comments, <laughs> yes, of course. Um, so that's our like number one way we communicate and um, access data to get weather information, which I'll let Stefan talk more about. Our backup communication is actually Iridium Go, and we have that all set up, and um, that provides a GPS ping also once an hour, so um, which links to predict wind. So that's how you know our tracks can be um, viewed as well for for our passage. You can send email. You can send. Um, SMS messages. Mm -hmm. Basic text. Basic text. It's low bandwidth. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's satellite communication, but very low bandwidth. And you can do calls, I guess, too. Um, Never tried. We haven't tried to do the calls, but we did do the SOS test. You have to schedule it, and then you do your test, and then they know it's you, and then they confirm that they got it. So it's good to know that there's a button for SOS that works, uh, mm -hmm. for sure. And of course, that's in addition to our EPIRB and everything else, which we won't go into. Um, and then sort of our, th our third means of offshore communication, um, our third level, is really the Garmin inReach, which is more of a GPS position, and you can kind of send very rudimentary texts. Messages, yeah. Yeah. It's like a messaging app. Mm-hmm. Um, so if something were to happen with those two systems, uh, the inReach is connected, and by something can happen, you know, what would take everything else out might be a lightning strike, for instance. Um, so having multiple things is probably useful to communicate. Of course, in addition to the regular VHF, where um, you may or may not be able to reach other boats. Mm. So anything else you want to... I kind of gave a high level... Yeah, we have. well, for the last two, uh, well, they all have some um, monthly payments. Mm -hmm. um, the Garmin inReach, um, we opted for the cheapest membership. Uh, so it's like, a, I forgot the cost right now, but it's uh, we pay by year because it's... Uh, the, the way we look at it, it's, uh, it's a backup system. So the thinking is... You never have to use it. You're not using it regularly, but... <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and it's cheap enough um, that you can buy your yearly plan. I forgot. And maybe it's like $100 a year or something. Mm. And I, you have to check the Garmin yeah. website. But it's, um, it's cheap enough that it's uh, with the minimum plan to leave it on all the time. Uh, this way you're not thinking, oh, did I stop the account or did I restart the account mm -hmm. when I'm starting a, maybe a mini passage or something and you forgot. So at least that's, there is this um, sign of, you know, uh, peace of mind where you have that on all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very small. So the Tiny. beauty yeah. of it also is we might be hiking in some remote islands where it's difficult to get cell coverage if you go hiking somewhere and in this case you will be able to take it with you your backpack and um, be able to send messages if something were to happen during a hike or something so that's kind of the reasoning of of this one for the iridium go it's it's a little bit more expensive uh, we used to use this as a primary system uh, before starting came along um, we have the unlimited type plan right now. Yeah, but it's like 150 a year or something. No, like it's that. more than that. Yeah, it's it's more. It uh, is. I think so. Or, or maybe the Garmin Enrich is like cheaper than Garmin what I Enrich said. is way cheaper. Yeah. So, but we have a limited plan right now. The thinking because we're in a passage mode. Mm -hmm. So why not and you can change it yeah. yeah so why not go with more and um and once we cross the atlantic we're closer to it's going to be uh, coastal sailing and then we'll probably uh, either turn it off for a period of time or we'll go to a plan that is um that is kind of a low cost plan mm -hmm. 
but the cost between the two, it's, they don't do the same, same thing, but the cost between the two is, is quite different. And so that's something you have yeah, to look into. Yeah, I think Enrich is a lot cheaper because um, I think the Iridium Go is at 150 or 160 or something like that because I just upped the plant like a month ago, I thought. Anyway, we'll have to... Uh, uh, yeah, Google it. Yeah, Google it. Um, <laughs> so, um, but I like the inReach because you can throw it in a backpack if we go for a day hike and not worry about getting... Well, I mean, if you get lost, you don't want to get lost, but if you happen to get lost and lose your self-coverage, you know, there's a, there's a backup for someone to find you. Yeah. Um, and, the, and that's the advantage of these two devices. You know, if you had to abandon ship, mm-hmm. um, you cannot take your Starlink with you. Yeah. Um, well, you could. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> you could, but... It <laughs> wouldn't work very well. So, uh, at yeah. least for now, I'm sure in the future, that will be on your phone. And But for now, so those two devices um, are also part of the ditch bag kind of uh, mm-hmm. uh, prep. So... Um, so then, um, our primary way we get weather information is um, you download the grib files from Starlink or whatever, like you can do it from Iridium Go. But why don't you talk a little bit about what you do and um, how you do, you know, as we sort of start talking about weather routing, how, we, how we're doing that? Yeah, so for weather routing, um, we're using um, a software called Octopus, uh, that's from Adrena. Um, so it's pretty extensive uh, software for navigation and routing purposes. Um, in order to download directly from this application uh, weather models, um, you need a subscription um, to um, to some kind of weather website. Uh, in our case, we use uh, a website called Squid, S Q U I D. Um, same thing. You pay a, you pay a monthly fee or yearly fee to get access to these uh, dif- much, different weather models. No, Squid is pretty uh, pretty cheap. Um, so you get access to a bunch of weather models, and based on where you're sailing, um, you are going to download certain certain files uh, based on the region. Uh, they offer a different coverage, geographic area, and different. Um, uh, precision uh, on the uh, weather model. So the more precise, the less uh, the less number of days in the forecast. And um, so, so you're kind of looking at at different weather models. The ones that are seem to be uh, or known to be good in certain regions. Or if you're sailing in certain area, you look at different weather models and you look at the ones that have been accurate lately, and you put give more weight to those. So these weather updates, um, they come uh, depending on the models uh, multiple times a day. So um, depending of different variables, then you might want to check the weather more often and reconnect uh, through starting and get the latest weather update. Or if things are pretty stable, then you can, you can skip a few. So that's uh, that's also for weather, but also you get wave information as well. So that's also useful. Um, so the the biggest advantage now to have uh, Starlink uh, while we're sailing is we can look at a much much wider area. Um, so there might be certain things you want to see uh, further away uh, that will explain a little bit what you're getting or what you're going to get. Uh, when you were with the Iridium Go, you had to really limit. Uh, the number of days, the limit to a geographic area, limit the number of models you want to download, uh, limit the number of hours of you want the updates. So in the end, and then you wait a long time to get that uh, that weather information. Um, so with uh, Starlink, now you have access to a lot more information. You could go to uh, check some satellite pictures. Um, online also, um, if you wanted to. You so can see more of the big picture, so you could even log in and see Windy and all the regular sites um, to kind of get the big patterns. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's um, Windy, uh, yeah. For, I mean, this, they use the same weather models, basically, but it's uh, it's a little bit more user-friendly, mm-hmm. so you can you can move things more quickly, like, you know, so... So that's the big difference. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Now you can really uh, focus more on, on weather planning mm-hmm. and, um, and adjust your route. So before you talk about r- routing, I just want to add, you know, when we're close to shore, 
Um, so this isn't necessarily passage related, but when you're close to shore and you're using Starlink, um, you do get data. Um, so you can look at, you know, we're sitting here, we'll, we'll look at Wendy, we'll upload the podcast, we'll, you know, you can look at whatever information you want. Um, and that is included in your regular data plan. When you're offshore, um, you have to have mobile priorities. So you're given a certain amount of, you know, gigabits for your plan. And then if you go over that, you pay whatever, $2 a gigabit or whatever for, for the passage to get that information. So, um, you know, we're not, we're not, um, connected all the time, like I said before, but, um, when we're on the coast or close to shore, it's easy to look at information, even from the SIM cards in our cell phones, um, as well. Yeah. Addition. The thing about Starlink is the, the gigabit, like they seem to go really fast. Really fast. Uh, part of it might be, uh, uh, you used to have, um, high bandwidth, uh, low latency like you know internet at home and you're like oh you feel like you're at home but 50 gigabits is a lot but I think also they have a certain way of counting things <laughs> <laughs> and and so 50 gigabits is a lot once we're uploading videos and stuff it's definitely not so um, once you've reached your 50 gigabit and you paid for that monthly fee and, and beyond that like yeah like you said like first they're going to make you use your your, your 50 data. gigs yeah and after that um you're not priority but you get minutes and those are all included free although i don't think it i mean knock on wood it hasn't been terribly slow um no it's been slower i think when we've been offshore using mobile priority so that's when you're paying for the minutes or the gigabits excuse me yeah and then the difference also we can mention between the two antennas um so we used to have during the summer during our shakedown the, the flat hp antenna that was not installed in a fixed position so when we would want to connect we would move it outside the boat mm -hmm. and so definitely that antenna would connect much faster much faster to starlink mm -hmm. um, i don't know how many but minutes but i would say more like minutes i would say five minutes yeah but it is uh, uh, quite a bit more power hungry than the standard antenna yeah for sure for the standard antenna so far i mean we also put it in different conditions where the boat is bouncing and stuff yeah when the boat's bouncing around it could take up to a half an hour to an hour to find a connection which was surprising although um keith at sailing zatara came over to our boat when we were in lanzarote with a special drill and he uh, drilled into the back of our starlink and um, un unplugged the motor which I guess connects the Starlink to it moves its neck around to find the right um, satellite or whatever but on a boat you want it flat and um, so he disconnected that and it does seem like it connects more quickly now that that's been um, yeah it basically disabled. acts like the flat HP antenna yeah. it's horizontal looking up to the sky and um, so it still takes like 15, 20 minutes. I'd say minutes. 15 minutes, yeah. Um, and, it, and it will disconnect once in a while. But when it disconnects, I think once it got a connection, even if it disconnects, it's pretty quick to yeah. reconnect. Yeah. So that's Starlink. Um, again, before we move to weather routing, I also have uh, a little account on PredictWind myself um, on my phone separately. Well, in the iPad, I guess, too. And that's just another thing to look at. The thing with weather models is um, <laughs> you can't depend on one. You know, there's lots of ways to look at the models. Um, you know, the, some model, the local models are always better than kind of these more generic, bigger models, I think, um, because they're more specific to a region and a certain local conditions. So offshore in the middle of the Atlantic, I'll be really interested to see kind of which models pop to the top in terms of, you know, being dependable. Um, yeah, I mean, the choice is more limited for, yeah. for those who have global coverage. Yeah. And, um, that's what you need for uh, offshore passages. Yeah. Um, so you pull the um, grip files in from Squid into Octopus. So how do you do the routing? So... Yeah, so you download, so what I would do is, uh, because 
we make the assumption here we are not limited by bandwidth and mm -hmm. file size so I kind of not pay attention to that I mean we're talking about before there was kilobits you know for Iridium Go now we're talking about megabits yeah mm -hmm. and you know if it's like two or five it doesn't really matter so mm -hmm. so the first step is uh, you go to the forecast section and based on, like I said, the geograph geography you're in and stuff, you're looking at which weather models you're going to be interested in. And I'm going to basically grab uh, the different weather models that I'm interested in and download them over the period of days that, uh, that I want. Um, and I usually pick the, the highest precision. So some starts at three hours, six hours, and so forth. So I always, always pick like, you know, the minimum one. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I selected the, the geographic area, uh, and once I've done that, I can select and then select some some information to make the file smaller, but I don't bother. And and I download uh, the files. So the tricky part is because you have multiple updates a day. Um, you really in the naming convention of your file, you need to really make sure you kind of properly label the file with mm -hmm. the weather models, the time, the, there is the time that the model is, uh, let's say it's a six o'clock model UTC, but there is the time, it's just not released at six o'clock. At six o'clock, the computers are crunching the data and maybe six hours later, it makes it, makes it available. And then, you know, by the time it gets on the so website- So the weather model download. isn't even real time by that no, time. No, no, for sure yeah. it's not, yeah. So it takes time to, uh, to mm -hmm. crunch all these numbers, all this data. So, uh, so you have to not be confused between like the different times and so on. So I, I try to make an effort to do the file naming convention kind of to make it easier to, uh, to retrieve afterwards. Mm -hmm. afterwards. So I download uh, different ones and then uh, what I'll do is I'll do like point A to point B with no restrictions on amount of wind or no restrictions on on amount of waves and just basically let the routing software tell me where it wants to guide me. Oh, so you don't set any parameters. Maybe that's why we always get in these <laughs> like heavy no. sea states. No, no. <laughs> The initial initial phase, you kind of want to let the the model, the software, do its job. tell you, yeah, yeah, do its job. And then, and so I would launch different routing for the different models, for example. And I can look at that first high high level, like, oh, are they all saying more or less the same thing? Mm -hmm. And then you f you have a level of confidence in your forecast that's going to depend on that. Or there is like a um, couple models that point some way and then one mm, points a different way. So this is kind of the interesting part is which one is right and, and why is this one pointing in this direction? So again, it's not like one model is going to always be better than the others. It's going to be um, um, based on different factors <laughs> like you say i mean it's a little bit of an art yeah mm -hmm. there is the human analysis behind it and uh, and what you observe and and so i think what's important is to run these models regularly regardless of you doing these passages because first you're kind of doing a little bit of a memory exercise or visuals visualizing what's going to happen and when it changes you can understand oh this is changing why is it changing let me look at the macro picture and try to make sense of it and i think it's important to do it as regularly and uh, because then you have this in the back of your head um, so when you make a decision on which route we take like in leg one for instance um were you like at some point do you go okay well we can take this route and it's you know basically maybe one job and we're done and it's going to be short but if we take this route there's more to do but less waves like how do you make the determination on on like what's your logic for making that decision yeah, if so you don't put in parameters, like no, well, no, like I said, the first step, you don't put parameters, and you don't want, you know, to restrict the model to mm. certain things. Uh, but once you have this data, then you can start running 
different things on with the software. That's so you know, you know, this option is faster, but it's going to be more sporty. This option is you no. Know. So then, then it will be like, well, I don't want to face winds more than I mean, depending if you are running or heading to the mm-hmm. wind. But you know, I don't want to f- to face winds that are more than a certain amount of knots. So now you can say, okay, let's do this, and then it's going to give you a new route. So now you compare. It's like, oh, okay, I can I can restrict the amount of wind to like 25 knots, and in the end, I'm going to arrive just an hour later. Right. So it's like, oh, okay, you it's know, no big deal. It's, okay. You know, so there's the idea. That's the beauty of the writing software is you you can run very quickly now that you have the the weather files downloaded. You can run different models you can start adding some uh, limitations you know okay let me show me the waves and i don't want waves more than you know two meter blah 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 Mm -hmm. Um, so you you then start adding restrictions and you see how the route is being changed Mm -hmm. and um and so you can you can play you you can download your data and then you within the (laughs) Uh, some parameters because you could be uh, playing all day, but you, mm-hmm. you're starting to 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 visualize and see what the what the optimum route is with these different restrictions. You mm-hmm. are adding little by little. What I see you doing, which I think is really fun, is um, the the octopus system pops out your virtual boat. So it's like this is this is how your boat should go. And it predict when does this too. It shows you the boat you should go. Mm. And then it shows you your actual boat. So as you're continuing on your route, you're sort of trying to, to beat the virtual, the virtual boat, the buddy boat. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a fun, it's kind of a fun game because there's what the weather's supposed to do. And then there's what the weather's actually doing and what the crew's doing and what the boat's doing and what the sails are doing and all of that. So it's kind of fun. Yeah, it it keeps you. So, of course, to run this model, this routing, you need to have polar polar mm-hmm. files. Yeah. So, for every angle, and um, there are certain speeds that are being for your boat is being recorded uh, for angles and wind. And so, you can tell also the software, like you know, I want to plan my route with eighty percent of the optimum polars that you have. And uh, or you can be like at night, I'm going to want to be at 70 percent and during the day at 80 percent. So you can do things like this. So the idea being you want um, your route to be as realistic as, of course, the, the it's only a model, but to as be a as, prediction. as, as yeah. yeah, as really realistic as, you know, not not your wishful thinking, but, you know, right. based on the weather, based on your crew, based on whatever. Um, so, so, but at any time you can obviously, um, run, you can download new files and then from the point where you're at, you can, you know, now start again the whole exercise or you can have your route, but now you've, you have still your weather files on your computer, but because the reality on where you're sailing, it might take you somewhere different or you might make that decision to be like, okay, the model and my route was supposed to go this way, but the wind has been doing this and I'm right. going to go like right for it, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then you can relaunch, you know, uh, based on still the same models, but now you move into a different position and you're like, okay, give me now from that new position I'm at what the uh, optimum route is still to my destination. Yeah. So, so it's it's quite it's really a continuous exercise, and and um, yeah. and of course you you see what you see, and and you you can trust the models to a certain point, but you have to also make decisions based on on, yeah. on what you see. Yeah, and this Adrena octopus, I'll just give my two cents on it. Um, you know, if you if if you would like to kind of geek out on software like Stefan and I do, it's pretty cool. Like the feature I like is looking at the polars and seeing which sales it recommends when and how like where you are on the sales you have, and then it tells you like if the wind continues to shift this way, you're like, okay, we need to think about you know a sail change, which it, for me is helpful because I think if you've been sailing for a long time, you're like, okay, obviously we need a sail change, and that just comes naturally. But it helps me visualize and put data behind it and t- as to why that's happening. So for me, I really like I really like that. And it's it, this feature is good like pre 
pre-departure. Yeah. Because you will look at the route and you will look at the uh, recommended sales. So the night before we leave, we can take all the sales that we are we expected think we're to need. use. Yeah. Then they are they are on the forward on the trampoline. They're attached. They're ready to go. And now, if you need to make a sale change, um, it's more of like setting the sale as opposed to now you have to go forward, remove it from the four peak. And so yeah, it's nice. You already have a plan in your head. You have your sales laid out on your trampoline. And if you need to make a sale change, then you just make the sale change. It's, yeah. There is like, um, so that's very good for, for that. Yeah. yeah. My biggest criticism of the system is um, the user interface. So, um, yes. again, us being in software, we're like, oh, my God, this is circa 1990. Um, but the features are good. So my wish is that they they get bought by a private equity firm who <laughs> makes them update their UI. Um because it would be so awesome if it had a great UI. But once you get used to it, I, I think it's it's fine. It's just not awesome. No, it, it has evolved over time, but there has never been kind of a revamp of the software. Right. It's like it's like it's like written by racers for racers was their original Adrena and then the octopus is kind of they've applied it to a cruising version. Mm. But it's just not yeah, and then you, you eventually, you're like, oh, I wish I could do this. And you're like, oh, that, this software should do that. And and eventually, one day, you click on something, and you're like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, and then you discover, there it is. Yeah. now I can color code, like, so when I have my weather model, uh, because usually you have these little bars uh, for, you know, people are used to, like, windy, and it's colorful, and you see the wind motion, yeah. and, and it's very visual. Uh, but when you download grid files, um, it's the barbs. It, yeah. yeah, it's the, it's the barbs, and and so now, what? But of course, there is a, a line for all the the same wind strength. You know, right. kind of like um, I'm not finding, iso bars, I, like iso bars yeah. and stuff. So now I found the way you can do this in the software. Um, it helps you really to visualize it. It's I say show me or range of, so you have the range of colors and they say you know just from like 10 to 20 knots if the wind is going to be in that in that um, uh, air, area mm -hmm. so your mean is 10 your max is 20 and give me these different rainbow colors for to help me visualize uh, how so the, you figure that out yeah so, so it's like an accidental <laughs> It's like, oh, click the button and here it is. Kind yeah, of a thing. I had seen it with yeah. one on and I forgot. And, and because it's not intuitive. And then I was like, oh, yeah, it's here. And I yeah, there's, a, there's not like a real user's manual for yeah. it. And there's not really a big community no, for they, it. No, there is a user manual. Yeah, yeah. But it's, uh, I don't know. Have you it's, read it? Um, yeah, I refer to it because I look for some stuff. And, um, uh, but it's useful when you're on a passage. So it was great when we had um, Jean-Marc and, and you were three that I could focus on basically playing with this mm -hmm. uh, during my watches and or during the day. And um, because on land, it's not the same thing. You know, when your boat is moving and you're really like, you know, trying to uh, to figure this out. Yeah. It's a much better exercise than you doing it behind your desk. So, so now you can better visualize with these colors how the wind is going to move and, and you know, mm -hmm. so of course it's only precise to a certain amount, the models, but uh, it, it helps you visual, it, a little bit like a windy today, yeah. it helps you really visualize things. So even with the, uh, the barbs, like, you know, suddenly they have this color coding thing and uh, with these uh, uh, ISO lines, you know, for the wind mm -hmm. strength. So you kind of see better how things move and picture it in your head. So if we didn't have Octopus, what would we be using? Just Predict Wind? Yeah, to, people ask me. Um, so there are different software like Octopus. Um, this Octopus is uh, at Renas, like the French version coming from the racing world. And um, so that's very famous. But for it's that. not French, it's, it, it's English. Mm, the words are in English. Yes, it's okay. been localized in English. It's a French company. Yeah, that's what you mean. Okay. Uh, um, there is, I think, another, somebody mentioned this to me, another French software called Maxi. Um, and then I forget the English ones from the Anglo-Saxon world. Uh, you have Expedition. 
Uh, so you have a couple other softwares like this in this category. So those are going to require a higher price point. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the, I forget, the Octopus is like a thousand euros. Uh, it only runs on a Windows PC. Uh, so... Wah, uh, wah. <laughs> But which is good. <laughs> so we had to buy a little box to like shove back there. Which is also good to have a PC on board because uh, to configure a certain piece of equipment, it's only on Windows. Um, so at least you have a Windows PC. But yeah, that's that's not fun. Um, and so so it requires a cost between the software, between the application, uh, between the training, um, because it's not you know like we said uh, self. Uh, and then the hardware. Um, well, that's the computer. computer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So versus if you use uh, an application that is would be like a predict twin with Data Hub nowadays uh, to collect your polis. Um We haven't used it, but um, most cruisers, I would say, unless you're really interested to get into, you know, weather routing yeah. and geeking out, I would say the predict twin application with the data hub is probably, is probably uh, for yeah. 80, 90 percent of the cruisers. But That's you really like it. Like you, you, you really like kind of diving into that stuff, which is why you kind of yeah, I mean, have enjoyed it. We. I think we set as a goal, I mean, with this boat and, and with, our, uh, with our program to become better sailors over the years. And so why not? This is what your life is 24-7. You depend on the weather, depend on your boat, on your sails. Um, so just I like the idea of sailing smart. Um, and kind of I see this a little bit as a chess game. Uh, it's... And I think, you know, over time, as our polar is getting more accurate, as we learn more how to use this type of software and how to do the proper analysis of these weather models, um, that's also the safety aspect of it. You know, mm -hmm. if now you know you can move from point A to point B pretty accurately in this amount of time, um, a little bit like we did the other day, and that was a little bit, a bit of a gamble, but we went from Lanzarote to, um, to Las Palmas, during daylight and we had uh, 95 nautical miles to do uh, and we wanted to do it all in daylight and get there and anchor before before it got dark yeah and so we were literally dropping the anchor right when it was getting dark and and that's a that was a little yeah. bit of a gamble to do this especially also <laughs> my sister and boyfriend were getting there so we need to get there before it was dark but get there also to uh, to meet them to to meet them but you, I have been looking at the weather models the past few days. Everything was pretty consistent. Um, I think we felt pretty good also about our, our boat and our sail plan. And knowing that we left the dark, we motored out of the marina dark, but as soon as we had daylight, uh, we basically found the wind. Um, the island was uh, blocking the wind. So we got out of that. It was uh, daylight. We put the A2 and then we we raced against our virtual little buddy, mm -hmm. and uh, and we eventually arrived a little bit before our virtual buddy. Yeah. So it, it was. It keeps you kind of on your toes. It keeps you. Uh, it, it was yeah. definitely. It gives you a goal. You know, yeah. like you can you can better like plan for your sale plan. You can better set goals. You can be like, okay, this is realistic. Okay, these are the. It, yeah, it was it was interesting. I like but, that. But it was definitely uh, a little bit of a of a mm -hmm. gamble. Everything had to go right. The wind has to be. The wind strength yeah. had to be right. The wind angles have to be roughly right. Uh, we couldn't have any uh, problems uh, mm -hmm. that would have delayed us because if we had started to motor we would have been there like really really late mm -hmm. um, so final topic uh, weather routers so for passage um, on land yeah yeah so I think in general um, again it's another backup so sorry um, so paying for a weather router that you communicate with, you know, once or twice a day just to kind of um, have an on-land weather communication yeah, expert, Yeah, by, by a professional yeah. weatherman that uses basically the exact same software you, we're using in this particular case. Um, of course, they're doing this 24-7, <laughs> 365 and days a week. And that's their job. Like, they know how to do it. Yeah. Yes. And so they know which models are best. They know, you know, maybe what weather is. Like, I mean, they have access to the same information we could have with Starlink. But they, they've been doing this. That's their, prof that's their job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So um, it's smart, I think, to do it in, um, in passages. Um, the, uh, going back to backup, uh, everything could fail. Your electronic could fail. Mm -hmm. uh, we could have our little Garmin inReach as long as we have a little solar panel to power it. And we could get messages to say, go to this waypoint, go mm -hmm. to this waypoint, go to this waypoint. And then, uh, um, you know, of course, you will need to have a, a little way to enter your waypoint in the <laughs> kind of a GPS. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but now you have some, you can continue sailing and you can have like just basic information and they can bring you to, uh, mm -hmm. to shore. So just for that, I think it's uh, the cost of it. Um, so it's like for routing from like on Mott all the way to the uh, to the Caribbean um, over the period of time that you choose, you can stop and go. Uh, is like six hundred and eighty euros. So um, that's over a three or four month period or whatever. Yeah, I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. like whenever you're not moving or just right. doing coastal sailing, so we're not um, using him. But once we're going to uh, have our start departure date, before it will mention the uh, weather window, mm -hmm. and then we'll get so so weather updates. So the cost of it is uh, to have the peace of mind and as the backup, as a backup. and also to have. Um, you know, in this case, we can exchange files from the same uh, software. Mm -hmm. So I can do my routing. He can send me the file based on, based on his routing. If it's different, I don't know what parameters he has set, but mm -hmm. I, could, I could follow up and be like, oh, come my routing points in this direction. Yours is this. Like, what model are you using? Or, mm -hmm. or what parameters have you set? What do you see? Uh, so again, you want to have that analysis uh -huh. and maybe conversation. So that's, that's useful for that. Now, they you know um it seems like we've seen different weather routing from different um companies or individuals so they not all provide obviously they all provide the similar content but not the same way not to the same level of details mm -hmm. so i would say just do your shopping kind of ask for examples of what they yeah provide. ask what they provide um mm. we've seen a big difference there and there's a big range between you know, the wind is going this way, sail that way, to here are the conditions and the, you know, the high pressure is going to do this and the low pressure is going to do that, which means you're going to get this early in the day and that later in the day. Like, there's just levels of detail different, I yeah. think. Yeah. So, I think that's good um, also just to learn mm -hmm. because if your weather router provides the context and the details. Richer detail. Yeah. yeah you can really then learn. Then you can use these to understand the the macro picture and and then uh, and makes sense of stuff. Yeah. So it can be educational. Um, yeah. So, I think so for, for educational reason, purposes, you would probably want that. And if you just want to back up in case something happens, and you you just want the just the facts, like there's a different kind of router you can go with. Mm. So cool. So that was comms and weather routing. Um, did we miss anything? Anything else you wanted to cover? Uh, well, let us know if you have uh, questions of the content we just uh, dropped on you. Yeah. Um, if people have stayed until the end, we definitely need them to join our live session. Oh, yeah. We have a live stream session on YouTube that we're hosting this Saturday, December 2nd. That's 9 Pacific, noon Eastern, and what is it, Central European time? Do you remember? I don't know. Forget. Okay. Check YouTube. Not nine Pacific, um, noon Eastern, December second. Live stream on YouTube, um, and yeah, that would be good. And then the next podcast we're going to do is uh, also on passage planning. I think we're going to cover provisioning and how to think about fuel. Uh, those are the two topics. So thanks for joining, and fair winds for now. Bonjour.